So how do you create your most amazing photo ever? This video is sponsored by photographyacademy.com. We explore, create, and inspire. Professional photographers create their photos. Amateurs take pictures. So out of every good photo that I've personally created, none of them have been spontaneous shots that I took immediately after jumping out of the car. In fact, all my best photos are planned out and researched in advance. The difference between an amateur and a professional photographer is that the professionals place themselves, put themselves at the perfect place at the perfect time to capture the perfect image. This is what the professionals do to get their photos. And nothing is by accident. Nothing is a photo of opportunity. Not everything is planned in advance. So let me show you visually how you can do the same thing so that your photos can be as powerful as possible. So this is a photo that I saw uh, three years ago. I was working on the computer and I stumbled across this photo. I, it absolutely caught my eye right from the start. I was absolutely amazed at this mountaintop. And what intrigued me the most was seeing this field of grass that a farmer was apparently regularly cutting that went right to the top of a cliff and the jagged mountain peaks behind it were like nothing I had ever seen before. And from that moment, I saw this photo. I wanted to go to this same place to get my own version of that composition, except I wanted my photo to be better than the photo that I was looking at. Now, my first problem was that I didn't know where this mountain was. Many photographers will deliberately leave out the location of their photos on their websites or on Instagram because they don't want their favorite photography location being overrun with Instagrammers. And that was the case with this photo because I couldn't find the name of the mountain and I didn't know where it was located, but the internet makes this easy to find out. Now, here's the big takeaway for you, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I went through this process. I started creating one of the best photos of my life the moment that I saw that photo that I just showed you, this one right here. I started creating my own photo as soon as I saw this, and that's because I started my planning and my research for how I was going to go out and get my shot. So many photographers think that you take a picture at that moment when you lift your camera up to your eye and then you push the button. But if your goal is to create a gorgeous photo, like a real stunner, a real photo that you're really going to be proud of, then the creation process for that photo begins much earlier, months earlier, in this case, almost a year earlier. And I began my creation process the moment I took an interest in that photo that you see on the screen. My first goal, in my research and in creating my beautiful version of this was first, I needed to know the name of the mountain. Like, what is this place called? Where is it located? Because I wanted to go to this place and create my own version of this photo. So the first thing I did, and this is so easy to do, it's free. Nothing is, you, you don't need to pay for anything here. With my mouse, I moused over that image. I went right click and there is an option, if you use Google, it's called a reverse image search, a Google reverse image search. And with one click of the mouse, without any special app, without any software, I received this result. So this is what Google showed me when I completed that one click of my mouse. And what Google did, Google compared the original image of the mountain that I really liked with billions of photos in his database, and it showed me an array of visually similar images. And within about 10 seconds, I learned that this mountain that I liked was located in Northern Italy. Now that I knew where the location was, the next step was to learn exactly, okay, if I go to this mountain, where exactly do I want to stand to get in that same, to get the same composition? Like where would I need to stand and point my camera? Like I wanna know in advance. I wanna know before I go there. I don't want to be walking onto the stage with my guitar in my hand, trying to make up the song. I'm not gonna wing it. I wanna know it in advance. So if I'm gonna go to this mountain in advance, I need to know where I'm going to stand, like exactly. So once again, Google gives us the world's most amazing tool to help us for free. And now this tool is called Google Maps. So I entered the name of the mountain into Google Maps and this is what Google showed me. 
So take a look at the red dot. That's where the mountain is. And I zoomed in with my the wheel on my mouse over the red dot. Keep looking at the red dot. That's the mountain. Now in the bottom corner, once I got really close, I could see, oh, looks like some ski runs there, ski lifts. In the bottom corner, I clicked on the satellite view mode. So now I'm in satellite view. I'm looking down like I'm looking from space. And I see in the top corner, that's the mountain peak there. Top right corner of the image, that's the mountain peak. So Google has another awesome feature. It's called 3D. In the bottom right corner, I clicked on 3D, and now I can see the three-dimensional image of that mountain. And I'm able to scroll down like this, change the orientation until the view that I was seeing kind of resembled the original photo that I saw. And from there, right where the, my mouse is, right in the middle where I'm circling it, that is exactly where probably that original photographer took his or her photo. And here is another snapshot of that. So the picture on the left is the original photo that I saw online. And the picture on the right is the three-dimensional view from Google Maps that I just showed you. And this confirmed for me that I had the right place and I knew where I needed to stand to get that same composition. So now I had half of the equation. There's still another half missing, but I had the first half. I knew where I needed to be. But what was missing was, when do I need to be there? When do I need to be there to get the good light? So it's vitally important for any landscape shot to be in the right place at the right time to get the good light. So there are some very inexpensive apps that you can get that will show you when the right time is to be at a specific location. I'm gonna show you one in a second. So I used one of these apps to tell me what the light was going to look like in the future on a specific date. So I wanted the mountain for my photo to be bathed in warm sunlight and I wanted the sunlight to come from the left. Like see the dark part of the rocks? Like when this photographer took the photo, the sun was kind of coming from the right. In this case, I wanted the sun to be coming from the left. I really wanted to see those cliffs just bathed in warm orange light. So the question is, when should I be there? Because everybody knows that the sun does not set at the same place every day of the year. Everyone knows that the sun moves, a the sunset location moves a little bit every day of the year. And I wanted to know where the sun would rise and where the sun would set in relation to that mountaintop on a specific date. And the answer to this question would tell me when I needed to be there. So I used a very inexpensive app and here are the results that I got. Now the red pin that I circled on the left is where I already knew that I needed to stand. So I placed the red pin there and I circled it for you. Now look at that big red arrow that goes to the right. That's the direction that I would need to point my camera. And I got that from the, the first step from Google Maps. Now look at the big red circle on the right. That's the actual mountaintop. That's that rocky, craggy peak. That's what I actually want to photograph. That's the main subject. So now you can see the red dot where I would need to stand and you know the direction I need to point my camera, which is to the right. But where would the sun set in relation to the mountaintop? Like where would the light source be? That's what I wanted to know. So look at that orange line on the left. That orange line is the direction that the sun will come from when it sets on a very specific day. I think this was July the 5th that I set it for um, when I set the date range. So on July the 5th, we know exactly the direction that the sun is going to be coming from when it sets, when it has that beautiful orangey warm light, which is the light that I wanted for my photos. And also, if I was really ambitious and I wanted to get up super early in the morning, look at the kind of to the right at the top, the yellow line, that's the direction that the sunrise will come from. So I know the sun will rise to the left of that mountain peak. So I knew with 100% confidence that on a specific date in July, there would be a beautiful warm sunset light, provided of course it wasn't covered in cloud, that would hit the mountain on the left side. So with only five minutes of very, very easy research, I knew that I wanted to be at my mountain, I'm calling it my mountain now, 
at a date in early July because the sunset would be hitting the left side of the mountain, which is exactly what I wanted for the photo that I was visualizing. So now I know exactly where I'm going to stand. I now know what time the sunset is. So I know even what time of day I need to be there. I know the direction that the sun will be setting from, and I know where the sun is going to rise in the morning. I even know where the moon is going to rise in case I want to stay up late and get a moon shot. So then I made plans. I made plans to go to that mountain and I actually went there. And when I arrived with Leah, my wife, I was full of confidence. And this is, this is a big deal. What I'm about to say right now, I was walking onto the stage with my guitar in my hands in front of the whole high school. But this time I'm walking onto the stage and I know exactly what song I am going to play. I was not winging it like I did. Um, 11 years ago on the edge of the Grand Canyon. I had the belief and the confidence that my photo was going to be a good one. And that is because I knew in advance exactly where I was going to stand. I knew in advance exactly the right date that I needed to be there on so that the sun would hit the mountain just right and bathe it in warm sunset light. I visualized the composition that I wanted so that when I got there and set up my camera, probably in a rush, it's always a rush when you get there. You're always arriving late for some reason. Um, so that when I was setting up my camera on that mountaintop for the very first time in unfamiliar territory, I would know exactly how to frame up that composition. I knew and because I visualized in advance how I would frame it up. So you remember me talking about the four-step system, which is so important to my photography process. This is step one in the four step system. I knew exactly where I needed to be. I knew exactly when I needed to be there. I visualized the composition that I wanted before I took the photo. That's step one. So would you like to see the photo that I took when I actually arrived there? Let's go full screen for this. This is not a photo of opportunity that was taken by accident but rather it was planned in advance. And when I arrived on this mountaintop, there were no surprises. There was no more winging it and making it up as I went. Instead, I knew the composition I wanted even before I arrived. And this photo is one of the best photos I have ever taken in my life. I love this photo. I am proud of it. And for me, that's what matters the most. And that's what matters the most for you and your photos, that you love your photos and that you are proud of your photos. So to put some icing on the cake of this photo, it won a gold award at the International Image Challenge from Master Photographers International. So when you hear my story about how I created this photo, do you think you could do the same thing at a location of your choosing? It doesn't have to be in Italy. It could be a location that's close to home. If you were shown the easy way to do that type of research that only took me a few minutes, could you do the same thing using some free online tools? And I think obviously the answer is yes, absolutely. You can do the same thing. If you have a computer, you too can use Google Maps to plan out the best photo of your life, just like I did. 